is tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTut and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. This time around we're taking a look at how to create this Polaroid effect inside of Photoshop. It's quite simple, very easy to get started and beginners should be able to follow along as well. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. The first thing that you're going to need to do is create a new canvas. Now I'm going to create an A4 one here. And the first step is going to be go to image rotation and just rotate that 90 degrees clockwise so that you can um, work with a bit more freedom here. Now I've got some um, Creative Commons stock imagery here. Um, uh, you can get these from wherever you like. I got mine from pexels.com. That's not sponsored. I just think they're very good. I'm going to grab this background and I'm going to grab this picture of this girl here. I'm just going to drag those into my composition place both of those and we can probably just hide the background for now. We're not going to need that um, for a little while. However, what we will do is we will go down to our shape tool here and we'll just create a black background. And just drag that to the bottom. And this gives us a really clear workspace. So when we see the edges of the Polaroid later on, we can determine what they look like properly. Now, for those who don't know, most Polaroid photos have a square viewfinder, which means they take square photographs roughly. So I'm going to draw a completely perfect square holding the shift key and just align that on top of my photo to the portion that I want to keep. Then with my photo selected, I'm just going to choose the mask tool down here to mask out that area of the image. Underneath that layer, I'm going to go to my rectangle tool and I'm going to choose a nice off white, maybe like so. And I'm going to use that just roughly to draw out the shape of the Polaroid that I think I'm going to be happy with. Maybe something like that. Let's drag that underneath. And then with both layers selected, I'm just going to align those vertically to the center. Um, oops, sorry. That's not going to work because I haven't applied my mask yet. Now we're going to be applying effects to this later on that require us to rasterize this image. So I'm going to right click the image here and choose rasterize. Then I'm going to choose apply layer mask. That means that when we center these, they will be actually centered. If you center them um, vertically as well, you know that it's in the middle and then you can just push that up to the point where you want it to be. Somewhere where the top three edges are equal. Okay, that looks a little bit tall still, so I might just squish that a touch. And that is the basic shapes of our Polaroid image ready. We're going to want to add some text on top of this as well at some point, so we might as well do that now. And I'm just going to call this one um, Festival. Okay. Now, this is fairly close to the font that I want. It's felt tip Roman, but I'm actually going to choose uh, one called felt tip woman. Uh, and I'm going to pop that over just because I think it looks a little bit more handwritten. I'm going to scale that up. And I think what I'll also do is just give it a little bit of breathing room in terms of the tracking there, like so. Okay. Um, let's keep it bold. Just going to plop that. In the middle somewhere. Now these are the basic elements as you can see that we're going to need for our Polaroid here but as you can see they don't look anything alike at the moment in terms of uh, how realistic this one looks compared to the others. Now what this has if you zoom in is some nice stippling around the edges to make it look like a more realistic photograph. The image itself has been faded, the ink has been faded into the picture and there's a nice texture over the top that suggests a crease in that as well. Um, in fact, I think that's a little bit chunky compared to this one. This one looks uh, like there's a lot more space along the bottom. So what I'm actually going to do is increase the height of this. Like so. That makes it look a little bit nicer. Okay. Okay. So first step is to fade off this image a little bit. Now, if you select this image here, you can actually go down to the um, effects panel and just choose uh, curves. That should bring up a properties window with your curves. And essentially what this means is the bottom left hand side of this graph would affect any of the dark areas of the image. And the top right hand side of this graph would affect the light areas of the image. So if I drag this down, it's going to remove all of the bright colors from our image. Now, as you can see at the moment, that's affecting everything. We, of course, only want that to affect the one layer below it. So with the Alt key held, we're going to move our cursor between the curves one layer and our image layer and just click. And that's going to pop that over to the right a little bit. What that means is you're creating a clipping mask and it's only going to affect the layer directly beneath it, which means if I put an anchor point here and bring up the black slightly, 
that's going to start to fade out our image. So I'll do that a load so you can see that it's only affecting that one part of the image. Okay. But what we're going to want to do is just bring up ever so slightly just to flatten that out a little bit. Okay. And if we show and hide that, we can see what's going on there. That looks quite nice. Gives it that kind of vintage faded look. Okay. Let's pop those in the folder of their own just for now. And um, we'll leave it like that. So the next step then is to um, roughen up the edges of this rectangle a little bit. If you go to your rectangle layer and select it, and then go up to Filter, Stylize, Diffuse, there'll be a little message that come up that says we have to change our rectangle to a smart object. That's fine, that's what we want to do. If you do that, you'll have four options, normal, dark and only, light and only, and anseotropic. We're going to want to leave this one, I don't know where it is in this little preview window, it's somewhere, ah, there it is. We're gonna to want to leave this one on normal mode. And it's difficult to see against the checkers, but all that's gonna do is just roughen up the edges of our Polaroid a little bit. Now, if you zoom in, you can see it's actually done it pixel perfect, but that's okay because the size of our competition is gonna be just fine. We can do that twice if you want. This step depends on uh, the size of your composition. The smaller it is, the less you'll have to diffuse. The larger it is, the more you'll have to diffuse. Again, I think that's pretty happy. It creates a nice little rough edge. That's taking care of the edge of the um, Polaroid, but we need to do that on the edge of the image as well, because this is giving a sort of false texture to the paper. And it doesn't make sense for it to have a diffused edge here and no diffused edge here. Okay, so we'll do that same thing to our image layer. Filter, diffuse, filter, diffuse. Okay, starting to look a little bit better now. However, this one looks much more realistic because there's a paper texture over it. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to add a paper texture. If we go back to our stock images, you can see another one here. I've got is just a normal paper texture image. OK, this could be any paper that you want. I found one with a really nice thick crease going down the middle. So I'm just going to grab that and drop it into my composition. This next step is up to you. But what I'm going to do is position so that my crease runs roughly vertically and covers the right hand side of my image. OK, we are then going to control click the thumbnail, very important that it's the thumbnail of our rectangle to image. And that's going to create some marching ants around the border of our um, creased paper. Make sure that it covers up the entire area. Then with your paper layer selected, just add a mask and that adds it over the top. OK, so it's important that we drag the festival text underneath this layer as well. So we'll pop that maybe above the rectangle, below the picture, um, just so that the paper texture is overlaying everything. And what we'll do is we'll just pop that above, um, no, sorry, below the curves, otherwise that curve, like so, should only affect that, like so. So above the curves, and then the curves only affects that image still. We then need to go and flick through some blending modes. Now, it'll be up to you which one you think works best. Some people might prefer darken, some people might prefer multiply. I prefer multiply because it lets this shine through on the color. But flick through, see which one you prefer. You might like the look of linear burn, for example. I'm going to leave it on multiply this time around because that lets the white shine through and um, with varying degrees, lets any darker colors um, override that. So you can see we're already starting to get there a little bit now. This is starting to look a little bit more like it should in the other previous uh, version. It might have pushed that diffusion a little bit too far, but that's OK. It doesn't matter too much. The next step is to take care of this um, text here. OK, first step is probably to make it a little bit of a lighter blue. That's probably quite intense. Maybe we'll fade that down a little bit like so. Then we're going to add a diffusion to this text as well. Just the one, maybe that probably looks good enough. Let's try to. I think two works. Looks like it's bleeding in a little bit. This next step is really simple. People think it's more than it is, but it's not. OK, we're just going to add a mask to this layer and we're going to grab a nice big soft brush with our B tool. So we're going to bring the hardness way down and we're just going to bring this to sort of a darkish gray on the mask layer. And then being very careful not to just click right in the middle, unless you think that looks nice. We're just going to start to fade out some of this text a little bit. OK, making sure that you're not being too heavy handed. 
a little bit of an offset maybe makes it look a bit more realistic like so okay that fade looks okay but it looks like this paper's been handled a bit so it might be a good idea to smudge some of this so if we go over to where our blur tool is probably looks like a teardrop to you we're going to move down to our smudge tool and with this we can click and drag around oops if we do that on the actual layer not the mask um, we can click and drag around and this will blur our text now that's pretty heavy we don't want to take it that far but we may for example want to blur this just a little bit smudge it sorry just a little bit where the crease is maybe on the edge of some of these letters like so and that's just going to make it seat into the paper just a little bit more okay looks pretty decent to me um let's see what this looks like within context then let's collapse our entire group and let's just make sure that all of our photo elements are now inside of this group we can then call this one polaroid let's pop our background back in and scale this up a little bit just want the wood really like so okay now if we were to add a drop shadow to this layer it may act a little bit weird i just make this black and we'll scale this up a little bit we're quite lucky this time because none of the masks are overlapping so we can probably get away with just doing a normal drop shadow like so okay however if your masks are acting strangely you can of course just come in with your pen tool or even the shape tool draw a rough shape that is the size of your um, photograph just gaussian blur that a little bit like so and bring that below your image in order to create your drop shadow okay this one i think we're okay so the last step i'm just going to skew it a little bit to make it seated just that a little bit more realistically on the table and that is pretty much all there is to it i'm just going to spread out that shadow a bit more and there you go as you can see we've created our own fairly realistic looking polaroid i think both of those have turned out pretty well there is one last step now this step is completely optional okay um, but this step is very specific to this image which is why i left it last now you can see at the very top of this image here i've got a highlight on one side of the fold and what that does is that just reinforces the fact that this is a real crease okay because obviously depending on which way the light would be hitting this piece of paper um, it would affect that so that's what we're going to do here as well we might try it with shade we might do it with light let's see which one works the best what we're going to need for this is either a dark or a light rectangle i'm probably going to choose this dark one see how that works out and we're just going to want to make sure that we align up the edge just roughly with the crease in our photograph here okay maybe something like that if you want a bit of help seeing you can always just drop the opacity a little bit i think that looks pretty good okay so let's just add a very very subtle blur on this one because obviously the crease isn't actually that hard so let's bring it down to about five pixels or so okay and then if we once again control click on the thumbnail of our rectangle layer here we can apply a mask to this layer that stops it overlapping the edge of that image we have two options we can go through the blending modes choose one that picks that fits our needs maybe something like this one here okay starts to fade out that little corner a bit maybe color dodge or hard colors let's try overlay and reducing the opacity of that okay as you can see that looks pretty decent and that's pretty much all there is to it just that one simple step adding that extra little bit after the fold i quite like this one because it looks like it's still shiny like a polaroid might be but either one works so thanks very much for watching everybody i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, if you did let me know if you want more of this sort of stuff also let me know in the meantime however keep creating and i'll see you all next time on tip top remember to subscribe for more tips tricks and tutorials thanks for watching